Our journey continues here in Jerusalem with a search for the Ark of the Covenant. Legends have placed the Ark in faraway places like Ethiopia or Ireland. But CBN's Chris Mitchell spoke with one researcher who believes the Ark might be a lot closer than people think. For millennia, scientists, theologians, archaeologists, and adventurers have scoured the globe in search of the rare Ark of the Covenant. This ancient artifact has long captured human imagination and intrigue. In a groundbreaking discovery that has left the world in awe, a group of scientists claims to have finally unraveled the mysteries that lie within this holy enigma. But what are these age-old secrets? In this video, we will delve into scientists' intriguing quest to uncover the secrets of this legendary relic with findings that could reshape our very understanding of history. In the world of history, mythology, and religious lore, few artifacts have held the enduring mystique and fascination as the Ark of the Covenant. Recently, scientists have sent shockwaves through the world as they claim to have achieved what centuries of exploration couldn't, a glimpse inside this mysterious symbol of divine connection. The Ark of Covenant is not just an ordinary wooden chest, it's a sacred vessel shrouded in myth and legend. The Ark of the Covenant, known as Aaron Haberet in Hebrew, is a lavishly adorned wooden chest covered in gold, which, during biblical eras, served as the storage for the two tablets of the law presented to Moses by God. Positioned within the Holy of Holies within the tabernacle of the ancient Temple of Jerusalem, the Ark was a site exclusively reserved for the High Priest of the Israelites on the Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. The Levites, responsible for priestly duties, accompanied the Ark during the Hebrews' wilderness wanderings. Following the successful conquest of the Promised Land, Canaan, the Ark found its home in Shiloh. When King David reigned, the Ark found its resting place within the city of Jerusalem. Subsequently, during the 10th century BCE, King Solomon was responsible for erecting the Temple of Jerusalem. Within this temple, the Ark was carefully relocated to the most sacred chamber, known as the Holy of Holies, referred to as Kodesh HaKadashim in Hebrew. Access to this space was strictly limited to the Israelite high priest and permitted only once each year, specifically on Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement. Jewish and Christian accounts describe how the Ark of the Covenant was transported by the ancient Israelites during their wilderness travels and occasionally accompanied them in times of conflict. According to Jewish tradition, Moses received a substantial amount of information during his time on the mountain. The information presented in these records can be found in the biblical books of Exodus and Leviticus, which serve as guidance for priests, numbers, documenting the Hebrew people's journey through the wilderness, and Deuteronomy, providing supplementary information about the initial legislation. After the Israelites departed from Egypt, Moses guided them to Mount Sinai, where he experienced his initial divine revelation from God. He left the people encamped at the mountain and spent 40 days and nights there. What Moses received wasn't solely the conventional concept of the Ten Commandments, but essentially the foundational constitution for the nation of Israel. Over time, these commandments were summarized into ten concise statements, phrased in Hebrew as short instructions like, Do not lie and do not steal. In the Greek translation of the Jewish scriptures, known as the Septuagint, they were referred to as the Decalogue. From a theological perspective, the tablets were divided. The initial five pertained to matters related to the worship of the God of Israel, while the remaining five addressed the conduct of the nation. Contemporary depictions of the tablets incorporate both the original Hebrew letters and the subsequently added Roman numerals. When Solomon died, 1 Kings 14.25 tells the story of Pharaoh Shishak of Egypt, who conquered the region and looted Jerusalem. Shishak is identified as Shoshenk I from the 22nd dynasty of Egypt in the 10th century BCE. The passage mentions that Shishak confiscated valuables from the Temple of Yahweh and the royal residence, which included golden shields crafted by Solomon. There is scholarly debate over whether the spoils included the Ark. The Ark reappears in 2 Chronicles 35. 1. 6 when King Josiah, 640, 609 BCE. A religious reformer instructs the Levites to place the sacred Ark in the temple that Solomon, son of King David, built. 
Some theories suggest that the Ark was concealed during Shishak's invasion and remained hidden until Josiah's reign. In 587 BCE, the Babylonians destroyed Jerusalem and Solomon's temple. The later apocryphal text of 1 Esdras mentions the taking of vessels of the Ark of God and the king's treasures to Babylon, but does not specify the Ark itself. The Jewish scriptures, which narrate life in Babylon and Persia, do not mention the Ark. From this point in Israel's history, scientists, scholars, and archaeologists have been searching for the Ark of the Covenant for the past two centuries. Alongside the Holy Grail, the Ark remains one of the most sought-after relics of ancient times. Theories about the Ark draw from Jewish Hellenistic literature, but where is the Ark of Covenant now? Certain theories suggest that the Ark may have been concealed during the Roman siege in the Jewish Revolt, with a possible clue found in the Copper Scroll. This scroll, a distinctive discovery among the Essene scrolls unearthed at Qumran, enumerates 64 locations where gold and silver were hidden. Similar to other scrolls, it employs cryptic language to describe these places, making them challenging to decipher. References to the Ark appear only twice in the New Testament. The letter to the Hebrews, authored in the 80s or 90s CE, posits that Christ serves as the genuine high priest, with mentions of a heavenly temple featuring the Ark. The Book of Revelation, authored by John of Patmos, portrays the temple in heaven where the Ark of His Covenant was seen within His temple. Baruch, an apocalyptic text from the late 1st century CE composed after the temple's destruction, narrates the tale of angels descending before the siege to safeguard the temple's artifacts until a time of restoration. The text suggests that the earth was directed to swallow them up. Efforts to locate the Ark have extended to places such as Mount Nebo, Rome, and beyond. The Knights Templar, a group of European knights established during the Crusades to protect Holy Land pilgrims, are associated with stories of discovering treasures, including the Holy Grail and the Ark of the Covenant, while encamped on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Following their banishment and execution in 1307, rumors of their survival and hidden treasures have persisted through the centuries. A popular theory proposes that their riches were concealed in Rennes-le-Chateau in southern France, then transferred to Scotland, and eventually to the United States, under the assumption that the Templars evolved into the Masonic Order. One notable assertion of the whereabouts of the Ark comes from the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church, which claims that the Ark resides in the Church of Our Lady Mary of Zion in Axum. Their account of the Ark's journey from Jerusalem to Ethiopia is detailed in their sacred text, the Kebra Nagast. According to their narrative, Menelik I, who lived in the 10th century BCE, was the founder of the Ethiopian Empire. He was purportedly the son of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, who had visited Jerusalem. Raised as a Jew, Menelik I visited the capital city, and upon having a vision foretelling its impending destruction, he took the genuine Ark and left a replica in its place. While Ethiopia once had a substantial Jewish community, remnants of which were airlifted to Israel during Operation Solomon in 1991, the country converted to the Orthodox Church during the Middle Ages. Nevertheless, the Ethiopian Church preserved certain traditions. Each church has a tabit, resembling the Ark. Additionally, there is an annual festival during which priests process with tabits on their heads. One priest is chosen to serve as a lifelong guardian of the church in Aksum. Despite these practices, all attempts to view the Ark have been steadfastly denied. In his contentious book called The Sign and the Seal, published in 1992, British author Graham Hancock discusses the Ethiopian belief regarding the Ark's journey. According to this belief, the Ark spent many years in Egypt before reaching Ethiopia via the Nile River. In Ethiopia, it is said to have been kept on the islands of Lake Tana for approximately four centuries before being transported to Aksum. Notably, archaeologist John Holliday from the University of Toronto dismissed Hancock's theory, describing it as unreliable. Edward Ollendorf, a former professor of Ethiopian studies at the University of London, also expressed a negative opinion, stating that he found no merit in Hancock's work. Ullendorf, who had personally examined the Ark held within the church in Aksum in 1941, while serving as a British army officer, described the Ark he encountered as an empty wooden box. 
He indicated that it appeared to be a construction from the middle to late medieval period, suggesting that such artifacts were fabricated for specific purposes during that era. On June 25, 2009, Abune Paulos, the Patriarch of the Orthodox Church of Ethiopia, made a significant announcement. He declared that the Ark of the Covenant would be unveiled to the world the following day, claiming that it had been securely housed in a church in Aksum, Ethiopia. However, on June 26, 2009, the Patriarch reversed his decision, stating that the Ark would not be unveiled after all. Instead, he affirmed its current status without providing further details. The Lemba people residing in South Africa and Zimbabwe assert that their ancestors transported the Ark southward, referring to it as the Ngoma Lungundu, or Voice of God. They claimed that their forebears eventually concealed it within a deep cave situated in the Dumgi Mountains, a place of spiritual significance for them. In a Channel 4 documentary in the United Kingdom on April 14, 2008, Tudor Parfit adopted a literal interpretation of the biblical narrative and explored this Lemba claim. He proposed that the object described by the Lemba shared certain attributes with the Ark of the Covenant. It was of similar dimensions, carried on poles by priests, forbidden to touch the ground, regarded with reverence as a vessel of their god, and was believed to possess formidable power, capable of overcoming adversaries. In his 2008 book titled The Lost Ark of the Covenant, Parfit further posits that the Ark might have been transported to Arabia following the events outlined in the second book of Maccabees. He refers to Arabic sources indicating its presence in Yemen during ancient times. Although genetic Y-DNA analyses conducted in the 2000s suggested a partial Middle Eastern origin among some of the male Lemba population, they did not establish a specific Jewish connection. According to Lemba tradition, the Ark temporarily resided in a place referred to as Sena, possibly Sena in Yemen, before being transported across the sea to East Africa. There, it may have been taken inland during the era of the Great Zimbabwe Civilization. Per their oral history, the Ark ultimately self-destructed sometime after the Lemba's arrival with it. The Lemba priests subsequently created a replica using a core from the original Ark. This replica was discovered in a cave by Harold von Sickard, a Swedish-German missionary, in the 1940s, and eventually made its way to the Museum of Human Science in Harare. The Ark of the Covenant was reportedly kept in the Basilica of St. John Lateran, where it survived the pillaging of Rome by Alaric I and Geyseric, but was ultimately lost when the Basilica suffered a fire. Rabbi Eliezer ben Jose claimed to have seen the mercy seat of the temple in Rome, bearing a blood stain. Upon inquiry, he was informed that this stain resulted from the blood sprinkled by the high priest during the Day of Atonement. In Ireland, between 1899 and 1902, the British Israel Association of London conducted excavations on the Hill of Tara in search of the Ark of the Covenant. However, their efforts were halted following successful campaigns by Irish nationalists like Maud Gahn and the Royal Society of Antiquaries of Ireland, RSAI who aimed to prevent the destruction of the hill. Subsequent non-invasive surveys carried out by archaeologist Connor Newman from 1992 to 1995 failed to reveal any evidence of the Ark's presence on the hill. The British Israelites believed that the Ark could be located at the burial site of the Egyptian princess Te Tefi. According to Irish legend, Te Tefi arrived in Ireland in the 6th century BC and married the Irish king Eremon. Given the historical significance of the Tara site, Irish nationalists such as Douglas Hyde and W.B. Yeats expressed their objections in newspapers. In 1902, Maud Gahn led a protest against the excavations taking place on the site. Have scientists finally opened the Ark? On January 6, 1982, archaeologist Ronald Wyatt claimed to have found the Ark of the Covenant. However, in 2019, Researchers in Israel, including scientists and religious archaeologists, claim to have found the stone on which the Ark of the Covenant was once placed. This assertion was made by a team from Tel Aviv University who discovered a three-100-year-old 100 temple near Beit Shemesh. They suggest that the Ark was positioned on a square table, and this discovery is seen as a significant alignment between biblical accounts and archaeological findings. 
Archaeologists note the remarkable resemblance between this stone and the mythical large stone mentioned in the first book of Samuel. It was originally used to support the Ark when it was brought back to Beth Shemesh after being in Philistine hands. Subsequent excavations of the 12th century BC temple reveal that it was looted and intentionally desecrated by the Philistines, who turned it into an animal pen. The search for the Ark of the Covenant, a quest that has fascinated archaeologists for centuries and was popularized in the 1981 film Raiders of the Lost Ark, has reached a new milestone with this discovery. Scholars studying the large stone believe that the one, 100-year gap between its existence and the time of Moses offers evidence of biblical history dating back further than previously believed. The 12th century BC building is considered a temple due to its distinctive characteristics, including separation from other structures, sturdy walls, and its orientation towards the rising sun. There are speculations that two large concave stones with carved gutters might have been used for wine libations or creating sacred wine from olives. The presence of animal bone fragments, pottery, and cups at the site suggests that rituals were conducted there. Professor Shlomo Bunimovitz, the lead archaeologist, is confident that this was indeed a temple, emphasizing the unique nature of the structure and its contents. The stone itself measured 28 feet on each side, forming a perfect square, further reinforcing the idea that it held a special significance. In the mid 12th century BC, the sacred place of worship suffered looting and devastation, becoming covered in animal excrement. According to Dr. Zvi Letterman, an archaeologist from Tel Aviv University who led the project shortly after its destruction, the entire area was repurposed as an animal enclosure. He views this as a deliberate act of disrespect towards a holy site. Although there's no concrete proof connecting the nearby Philistines, whose settlement at Tel Batash was only seven kilometers away, to the destruction, the researchers consider them the primary suspects, as they discussed in their interview with Haaretz. Beth Shemesh, situated on the border between pre-monarchic Israel and the Philistines, often became a focal point for conflicts between different religious groups. The alleged reason for these hostilities may be linked to the discovery of a table deep within the temple. This square slab, which was initially found six years after the excavation began, was resting on two smaller rocks. Dr. Letterman initially thought it might have been a fallen Masaba. According to the first book of Samuel, the residents of Beth Shemesh gazed inside the ark and were struck by divine lightning as a form of punishment. This account from the Old Testament is famously depicted in cinematic style in the Indiana Jones movie called Raiders of the Lost Ark where those who peered into the Ark had their faces melt. Following its time in Beth Shemesh, the Ark was eventually transported to King David in Jerusalem, with a detour of 20 years through Kiriath Yarim. The assertion that this discovery is a part of the Ark of the Covenant story presents several challenges. First, the Bible indicates that the table was in an open field, not within a temple. Additionally, the narrative wasn't incorporated into scripture until the 7th century BC, centuries after the events. Archaeologist Israel Finkelstein from Tel Aviv University, who has led other excavations in search of the Ark, casts doubt on this latest discovery, questioning how a memory from the 12th century BC could have been preserved until the 8th century BC without a continuous writing tradition. He expresses his skepticism to Haaretz. On the other hand, Avraham Faust, a professor of archaeology at Bar Ilan University, suggests that the significance of the find might not lie in its literal existence, but in what it signifies for ancient traditions. He proposes that although the story was composed much later, this discovery could support the idea that some very early traditions found their way into the Bible. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, drop a comment, and share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for even more engaging content.